Good morning. Welcome to join us in our Sunday worship at Crossway Community Lutheran Church. Dear brothers and sisters and friends, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. It is the last Sunday before Christmas. In a few more days, we will be celebrating Christmas. As we look forward to Christmas, let us be reminded of God's love for all of us and how our Savior Jesus Christ humbled himself to be born into this world so that we all could be saved. Wherever you are this morning, let us unite our hearts together to worship God. This morning, our worship is carried out in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us come before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Dear brothers and sisters, the Bible says that all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of our God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Shall we now confess together our sins? Most merciful God, we confess that we have been bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us, so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. As God has forgiven our sins, let us put our voices together to praise and worship Him. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Christmas is coming soon. And the Bible says that the angels we have heard on high and sweetly singing over the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strings. So I'd like to welcome you to join me and we sing like angels together to praise Him. Why? Because Christmas is a special day to declare the birth of Jesus Christ. We claim the promise what is written in John 3.16. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, shall have eternal life. Hallelujah.
Now, not only the angels praise him, also the shepherds. They look up and, and saw the star shining in the east beyond them afar, and they knew that Jesus Christ was born. So this is a very wonderful hymn. I'd like you to join me and worship the Lord. We sing this together. service once again and this morning my message will be taken from the book of Luke chapter 1 starting from verse 26 to 38 yeah I think this is a very uh, 
familiar passage to many of you. Uh, Luke chapter 1, the stories and it's about the foretelling of the birth of Jesus, yeah, about Angel Gabriel appeared before Mary and told them about these miracles that are about to take place in her life. And this morning, I'd like to invite all of you to join with me to read the passage together, taken from Luke chapter 1, from 26 to 38. Let's begin by reading from 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born, and will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relatives, Elizabeth in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. He ends the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we once again go through this Christmas story. Father, we pray, Father Lord, that it's not just a story to remind us about the birth of Christ. And I believe, Lord, that as we survey through your word, there is a message, there is a word, Lord, that you have prepared for each and every one of us. Therefore, this morning as we come, we may our eyes, our hearts, our ears be open. And Lord, at this moment we pray, may your spirit speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever, anyone of us here, have you ever have um, an encounter with an angel before in your life? Now, I'm, I'm talking about angel. I'm not talking about um, some of you regard some of these good people have helped you, especially during your uh, the most difficult times that people who came suddenly and just appear to help you and delivered you from that difficult situation. I'm not talking about that kind of angel. I'm talking about the supernatural. I'm talking about the spiritual angels that appear in your in your life. Have you ever had that kind of encounter? I'm not sure about you. I personally have never had that kind uh, of encounter. I mean, up to now, up to my knowledge, I have never had such an encounter. But I believe... You know, when an angel of the Lord appeared before me, and I fully believe that something good is going to happen to my life. I know when an angel of the Lord appeared before us, something wonderful is going to take place in our lives. Amen? And here the story talks about Mary. Mary, she had this very supernatural encounter with the angels of God the angel of Gabriel. Now, although this is um, not something she ever dreamed of, and I believe that perhaps she had never ever dreamt or ever wished uh, these things would happen, but such an encounter is truly a blessing uh, through her life. In the verse 28, he says, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, 
Greetings, favored one. It is indeed a honor you know, if the Lord regards us as the favored one. You know, God's favor is upon us. And the Bible reminds us that all who are in Christ, the favor is upon us. It is an honor. It is an honor when God, uh, uh, the people who are serving Him, when she, the Lord. So for all of us who is serving the Lord, regardless of whatever capacity, regardless of what we are doing, where we are serving, whether you know, ministry, whether we are serving in a church or outside of the church, among the downtrodden people, among the disabled or whatever few or maybe some of us are serving as a missionary in overseas in many parts of the world, you know, among the poor people. As you are carrying God's mission, wherever you are, you are highly favored by the Lord. Amen. And here Mary had an incredible calling for her life. He, she was chosen to carry one of the most important, one of the most honorable mission of God. That is to bear and to give birth to the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Perhaps there was a moment of joy. Perhaps when there's an announcement will make to then hit her, there was a moment of joy. But, you know, as she looked at the prophecy, she could not quite believe or accept that how could this be? Because I am a virgin. How could this be? But what is impossible to man, the Bible says, is it's possible to God. Perhaps when she heard this, there was a moment because she was highly favored by the Lord and therefore she was assigned, was given this assignment, this honor to bear and to give birth to the Savior of the world. But I believe at the same time, it is pretty shocking or even there is a moment of doubt. Yet, in spite of the situations, the Bible tells us in verse uh, 38, she responded by saying, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary's faith, her obedience, her submissiveness to the Lord was something that is uh, commendable. In spite of feel, feeling perplexed, in spite of perhaps a lot of questions, confusions, a lot of doubts, yet she's willing to submit and to the Lord, to the angel of the Lord, say, Here I am, servant. Be according, be to me according to your word. Perhaps when you look at her life, it is something that is not only commendable, perhaps something to follow. You know, far too often when we talk to people, you know, when ask people to come to serve God, um, very often we hear the response, you know, from people is, no, la, pastor, not me, somebody else. Even though you ask them uh, to uh, serve in the ministry of the church, some of those have very high responsibility. Uh, perhaps they are doing some kind of a backstage uh, ministry, supporting ministry, or even ushering sometimes, you know. The immediate and often response we hear from people is, no, la, pastor, perhaps somebody else. Like, why don't you ask so and so? Yeah, I think this is not only happened in, 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 in Crossway community, but it happens to all over, all the churches. You will find people do not wish, even though we, we know it is a privilege, but yet very often we hear the response is no. And I find that the, one of the main reasons why that even though people know it is a privilege, it is an honor to serve God, but yet they are unwilling to do it. One of the major reasons is because that they are so focused on the I, me, and myself. Very often, that I, me, and myself is far more bigger than God. We, we are so afraid that we, we are not able to do this. We are not able to do that. We are so afraid that we cannot commit. You, you take up a lot of times, a lot of commitments. Therefore, the immediate response is always no, somebody else. Now, this has happened all over. And that, 
I'm talking about even myself as well. Many years ago, uh, there was long before I became a pastor. Actually, I I know that God called me into ministry. At, at that time, of course, I'm working in a corporate world and uh, in, a, in a sales and marketing. And uh, actually, I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing at that moment of time. Even when I know that God had called me into full-time ministry, I've been avoiding God. I've been running away from Him. They always say it is not me. Definitely, it's not me. I, I can't be that kind of person. You see, it took me seven years. I, I for seven years I've been running away from God, avoiding. Even there are many occasions I say, yeah, I, I think I will, I will submit, I will go. But the next day I chicken out because that I me myself is so big. Until after seven years, until I cannot run anymore and finally i told the lord here am i <laughs> let it you know uh, be me according to your word but this is not the case for mary even though at the beginning there is some doubt because how can it be i'm a virgin how can i give birth but in spite of the doubt, in spite of, of feeling perplexed, she responded, she submitted. But I believe that even though it sounds easy, but I think it wasn't easy to have that kind of response from her. Because from that moment onwards, from that moment, she willing to accept that assignment the privilege that God has given to her, from that moment, she responded to Angel Gabriel. It seems that her life had a descendant into chaos. Now, why do I say that? Now, first of all, since that day onwards, her marriage, her life will be in a mess. Mary had become pregnant before marriage. The Bible says in verse 26, she is only engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. She was not even married, only engaged. Now, of course, in today's society, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong. Pregnant before marriage is has become very common. And a lot of people accept this. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing shameful about this. In fact, some people are feeling proud about it. They even publicize that, oh, I, I'm pregnant, even though they are not married. They, they don't feel anything about it. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a kind of celebration. But I tell you, even if you would tell some of these people, say, oh, it is not right uh, to, to get pregnant before uh, you get married, they will tell you, you are old-fashioned. In today's society, many people does not find anything wrong and seems that everything is fine. But you must understand during the period, during that period, pregnant before marriage and especially under the law, under the Torah, she will face divorce. That is the very least. But there's a possible that uh, possibility that she even have to be stoned or she be killed for her perceived behavior. That is a very serious thing. Now, pregnant before marriage is a disgrace to the family. And all the more, it is an embarrassment uh, to his uh, fiance, Joseph. So at that moment, when she accept, when she receive that announcement, although it is a privilege, her life, her marriage will be going into a mess. I mean, it is not an easy thing to say, yes, here I am, be unto me according to your word. From that onwards, her marriage, her life is in a mess. And secondly, from that onwards, Mary's finances were also in a mess. As we follow through the stories, even when it come to Luke chapter 2, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem to register for their marriage. Now, before that, 
they do not need when they married they do not need to register just like in many of the olden days ancient culture perhaps they just come together have some kind of a, a celebration among the people and uh, they do not need to do any registration with the authority and they consider married it happens at that time as well but during mary joseph time uh, the governor caesar augustus decided that you come up with a decree that everyone who are married must register and as a result they travel to bethlehem to register their marriage and as you follow in luke chapter 2 the bible says while they were there the time came for the baby to be born when they're there supposed to register the baby and about to come out so she had to give birth to her first born a son she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them when they arrived there the bible says no place no room for them to stay now very often when we read this particular come to this passage when we see here the word there's no room for them we often think that perhaps all the rooms in the city are occupied you know and uh, therefore there's no room they have to go to this uh in uh, this place where all the animals and and he have to give birth and put the place a place the baby and the manger that's what we always think but according to many bible scholars and many believe that it wasn't really that scenario it is not so much of all the rooms in the city are being occupied but the reason is because joseph he was a carpenter not much of man money you know carpenter and especially at that time it's not a high paid job so therefore as a top carpenter he doesn't have a lot of money you know and i suppose that and even there are rooms available they don't have the money to rent those rooms and financially they are not very strong and all the more now the baby is coming up so they have no choice they have no money to rent room and those perhaps they are, can afford but it's not available therefore they have no choice they have to lay their baby in a manger now what is a manger very often we think that you know in a christmas story we 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 say uh, manger we talk of manger is this little nice wooden box uh, which is shown in the screen we often think that a manger is like this but a manger is actually a animal feeding trough the place where they put food for the animal to eat now because joseph occupation and financially they are not strong now with the baby adding to their family i can tell you financially they will be in the mess the moment Mary say yes to the angel. The marriage will be in a mess. Financially, even in deeper trouble. And thirdly, the community at the time is also in a mess. Now Joseph and Mary were living under an oppressive military dictatorship under the Roman Empire. And their king, king called King Herod, was a tyrant. He rule over the society with rod and with iron now just not too long before this there had been a civil uprising uh, a revolt among the people against the roman empire and and that of course that revolt that that uh, uh lasted even until uh, joseph mary's days it was under such a oppressive such a dangerous because of all these civil uh fightings and revolt at times jesus was born if you look at mary's life when she said to the angel here i am the servant of the lord let it be with me according to your word although we often think it is sound easy it is never easy because from that day onwards her entire world will be in a mess her marriage is in a mess her finance in a mess and you were to keep born 
give birth to a baby in such a messy society. Her life is in the mess. I wonder if there are times uh, in our life that we feel like Mary, where perhaps, or maybe perhaps even some of you right now are in such a circumstances. We are living in such a condition where many things are in a mess. Relationship are not like the way that you wish it should be. Maybe your marriage, you're struggling. Or you may have feeling stressed financially. Or you feel that you are unable to escape you know, from the day-to-day -day pressure. Meanwhile, we all know from Malaysia, um, our country is quite uh, messy politically, you know. And, and, that's a, and with the threat of COVID-19, um, it is still prevailing. Because of that, there are many restrictions. Some of our freedom has been restricted. And uh, with all this implementation of SOP, we find uh, we, we are bound in many areas, not necessarily physically, sometimes even mentally or emotionally. Even though, and, uh, even though, and uh, we know that in a few days' time, we have a Christmas, uh, it's Christmas Day. And as norm, as usual, every year, we have a, uh, and all over, all the churches, all the Christians, we have a big celebration in the church or whatever they might may be. However, this year, because of the COVID-19, um, we are not even sure. There are certain restrictions that even for Christmas gathering, Christmas celebration, we were not able to celebrate this very special day, like the day that we normally celebrate. Yeah? So the days are full of uncertainty. It seems that the whole thing is in a mess. Yeah? Under such situations, you know, sometimes people may wonder, some of us may wonder that where God's favor has gone in our lives. Yes, when you look at Mary's life, she was, her life was in a mess. But yet, there was an emerging miracle, even in the midst of mess. That emerging miracle is Jesus Christ. The Savior of the world was emerging from her life. While her visions could be blurred by the messiness in her life. But that didn't mean that the miracle was any less real. The miracle is real. I'm not sure about you, but I believe in miracles. And I believe that there is a miracle in every uh, mess of it, uh, things that happen in our life. Even though there are, our life may be in, you know, in disarray. In there are a lot of things that is happening, and perhaps we are even in trouble. But I believe even in the midst of all the trouble, miracles will take place and can take place. Therefore, instead of we are drowned by our circumstances, sometimes we are so our vision are so blurred. And our life is so drowned, full of confusions uh, because of the, the, the chaotic uh, circumstances. You know, sometimes, which is true, when we look at our situation, everything seems to be chaos. Nothing seems to be right. And then, and because of that, sometimes we, our visions of God are being blurred. We are being blinded. But it is in times like this, all the more we need to seek after the Lord. Instead of being blurred, instead of being drowned down and drowned and, and pulled down by our circumstances, we need to seek the Lord. We need to look at the light of Christ. For it is the light of Christ. His light can bring illumination. His light, the Bible says, is life. In John chapter 1, it tells us that, it said there was a true light. What is this true light? Is referring to Jesus Christ. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. When this true light comes, when come into our life, 
it will enlighten us. Regardless of who we are, regardless of our background, when we allow this true light come into our life, it will enlighten us. And John 8, 12 says, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, my friend, we all know Jesus. I know many people know Jesus, but do we follow him? Now, it is very interesting that um, because Jesus says that whoever, he didn't, Jesus didn't say whoever knows me. He didn't say whoever understand me. Instead, he said whoever follow me will never walk in darkness. That's a big difference between knowing, understanding, and following. Jesus said it's not about knowing, it's not about understand, it's about following whoever that follow me. Now, what do you mean? Let me let me illustrate. Perhaps we will in a dark pitch, uh, a, a, a pitch dark uh, jungle. Now, under that circumstances, we were not able to see the surrounding unless you have light. And perhaps you have a torch, a torchlight, a, a lighter or a matches, whatever. But even when you have the torch, even when you turn on the torchlight, you may be able to see what is in front. But you are still living surrounding with darkness unless until you willing to walk you are willing to follow the path which the lights has lightened up for you you will still living in darkness you will still living in the pitch dark jungle unless you are willing to act to follow the light and where it's showing and you walk accordingly you will remain where you are in a pitch dark jungle similarly jesus say don't just know me don't just understand me follow me meaning that when you embrace when you when you you, you act according to his teaching when you act according to his his advice that according to his guidance you know through the word According to it, you will be out of darkness. Many people come, you know, a lot of times people come and uh, talk to us, uh, see us, share about their, their, their stories, their, their life. They came to pastors for counseling and sometimes for advice. But if they don't act, according to what they have listened, what they have heard. Even though they know, but if they do not act, they do not follow, I can tell you their life is still miserable. They will still remain where they are. Even when life is in a mess, if you follow the light, which is Christ, miracle will take place. Amen. And besides, miracle don't just always happen instantaneously. Now, very often when we talk about miracle, um, we think of miracle means that a blind man will be able to see immediately after prayer or a lame uh, will immediately can get up and walk and run after the prayer. We always think that miracles must be instantaneously immediately the moment you pray the moment you receive while it is true while it may be true but i want to say this it does not happen all the time there are miracles that takes time before the miracle can come to life you know this is what we call the progressive uh, miracle those are the miracles that require enduring faith. It requires to persevere, requires patience before we could enjoy His blessing to His fullness. Now, since the day 
Gabriel pronounced the miracle upon Jesus about the birth of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Since that day, uh, Gabriel pronounced this miracle upon uh, to Mary. She had to carry that miracle in her womb for nine months, and not only that, it takes actually it takes thirty years of nurturing before Jesus Christ became. Uh, begin his miraculous ministry on earth. It takes time. While they already pronounced about the miracle, but it takes time for the miracle to come into being. It takes time. Now, when Jesus, remember, he feeds the 5,000. When Jesus performed the miracle, feeding of the 5,000, does that mean the moment he after he prayed the simple prayer, give thanks to the Lord? Does that mean immediately there are five thousand fishes and five thousand bread in front of every single one? Every one of them have a piece of bread and fish? The answer is no. Because if you read the Bible carefully, it is the same five loaves and two fishes. The miracle happened, but it takes time for people to enjoy his full blessing. Matthew 14 says, Then he gave them to the disciples. He's talking about the, 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 the two fishes and the five loaves of bread. Give it to the disciples. And the disciples give them to the people as uh, give them to the disciple, to the people, sorry. They all ate and were satisfied. It is the same amount of five loaves and two fishes passing from Jesus to the disciples and from G disciples to the people and the same amount passing from one person to another person. Perhaps the first person in front got it first. They got that miracle immediately. But it takes time before the miracle reaches to the last person among the 5,000 people. The Bible says they all act and satisfy. It is a miracle. To those who at first, it was instantaneous. The moment they pray, I can eat. But to those who are waiting at the back, it is a progressive miracle. But every single piece of the fishes or the bread was part of the miracle. And that is how Jesus performed many of his miracles on our lives today. We pray for instantaneous, we pray for a visible wonders, but often our Lord is quietly at work. He is performing or forming a miracle for us, piece by piece, bit by bit. We are not able to see, we are not able to touch, we are not able to, to hear it immediately, but He is at work. He is shaping our deliverance beyond what we can ever imagine. Philippians says that it is God who works in you will and to act according to His good purposes. God is at work in us. His miracle is at work even in the midst of masses. The miracle is emerging from the, 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 the messy uh, things that we are going through in life. Because the Bible always say, remind us that His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for us to stand firm and eventually to act on the miracle according to His good purposes. Even though life, there are a lot of uh, messy things in our life, as we look upon God, as we turn our eyes, look at the light of Christ, and I believe miracle will take place. And that sometimes requires a lot of patience, a lot of persevering faith, a lot of trust, a lot of obedience, 
and a lot of submission before the Lord before we can enjoy the full blessing of that miracle. Church, God does not always transcend the chaos or the, the, the mass the mass of our lives. He works in us immediately, but not immediately. But yet uses them to give even in the midst of of, of chaos, of confusion, of, of messiness in our life. He gave birth to miracle. But we have to be patient. We have to continue to, to trust, continue to persevere. We, we are, we should be like Mary. Look deeper. Look beyond our circumstances. Though, you know, after she received the pronouncement, the blessing, her life will descend into or the, uh, become very messy financially, marriage, and all the more giving birth in where the society is in the mess. But yet because of her willingness, she trusts that God will continue to grow that miracle inside of her. So we are to follow, we are to learn from Mary that even in times like this, continue to trust, continue to believe, continue to persevere so that our faith in God will abound and we will be able to join with Mary and say to God, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen. Let us pray. Father, this time we want to commit our lives before you. We know all of us, every single one of us, we're going through life uh, in a very different manner. And perhaps some are full of uh, trouble. Our life uh, is in a mess. The situation uh, in a mess. Nothing seems to be good, but yet, Lord, I pray in this time that they believe that as they turn to you, as they look upon the light of the world, Father, a miracle will be birthed in our lives. And also, Father, we ask, Lord, give us the patience, give us the, 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 the obedience, give us the persevering faith, the trust and willing to submit before you, the work of the Holy Spirit, so that that miracles that was birthed even at this moment, Lord, will, will continue to, to, to be nurtured and to be grown. And one day, Father, Lord, we will reap the harvest and enjoy the full blessings that, Lord, you already uh, put in advance in our life, even at this moment. So, Lord, we pray and ask of you, Lord, Holy Spirit, be with us, speak to us, in each and every moment of our lives, that even in the in the midst of, of trouble, yet God, we will not lose, but because, Lord, you are our navigator. Teach us and guide us, Lord Jesus, and bless us even this coming Christmas. It's not just about the celebration, but about the celebration of knowing and following Christ, the Savior of our Lord. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the message. God has made us His people through baptism to Christ, living together in trust and hope. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of sins the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, God has blessed us in our lives in many ways. 
is not only our duty, but also a demonstration of our love for God, that we return a portion of His blessings to Him. You may bring in your offerings and tithes to the account as shown on the screen. Thank you, and may God bless all cheerful givers. Let us now pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, it, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for staying in tune with us. Just one or two announcements before we go. For the members of Crossway Community Lutheran Church, uh, the other members, please take note that on the 24th of December, 20, uh, on the Christmas Eve, we will be having a Christmas Eve gathering. Uh, but not physically in the church, but the gathering uh, through Zoom. I'd like to invite all of us to join that evening, wherever you are. Maybe you're having a, a, a gathering with family, or you may actually invite some of the members to your home. And uh, together, we will go online at 9 p.m. that evening. Yeah. So we were having a Christmas Eve gathering at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve night. Um, the message already sent out to all of you that if any one of you have things to share, perhaps you want to share a testimony or even you want to present us an item, a song or whatever, please let me know. Please message me so that we can make all the arrangement. Before we go, let's uh, by faith receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shape at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul, your body, your spirit. And the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And I declare this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. And I'll see you on Christmas Eve, 24th December. God bless. Bye-bye.